Maddie was a leader from day one, even way before she had her captain's band. Um, she was a shy kid, but she was the brightest person in the room. Always soccer. I, that was her. Maddie was a leader from day one, even way before she had her captain's band. Um, she was a shy kid, but she was the brightest person in the room. Always soccer. I, that was her first true love. We joked that in college she was going to major in soccer and minor in lacrosse. Her personality, it's just Maddie, was, she was born to be a leader. She always put everyone before herself in every situation. She lit up every single room when she walked in it and she just had so much love for everyone in her life. I think the biggest thing for me is for people to know how she lived her life and how passionate she was about everything that she did and how much she cared about everyone around her. She died on that field and ask anyone that was there that night and anyone that comes back that her soul is absolutely on that 30 yard line. I was just completely overwhelmed by how quickly the community got together to back up the team, to back up the Potts family, and it's just grown. Since day one, the community has surrounded themselves around the foundation, the cause, everything. From the day of the vigil, seeing busloads of teams coming here, I think was huge for everyone, and that support has continued. Honestly, it was the night of the vigil they had for Maddie, two days after she passed, and I stood on the, in the press box and I looked out and there were thousands of like tortured faces, is the only way I could describe it. So this isn't just about us, this isn't just about Maddie, this isn't just about the team that has devastated my younger daughter, everybody else, it's about Cherho and our community and the people that Maddie affected in such a short 17 years. So I realized honestly that night it was my job to not only get myself and my family through this, but to get as many people as I could possibly hold and grab onto and you know bring up with us because these people needed to know that Maddie was going to be remembered because of how she lived her life, not because of the fact that she died. It's just gotten bigger over time, and I think that has a lot to do with Maddie, with Maddie mentality, and the Potts family. Seeing a community of people that are still so passionate about the cause and helping the foundation and doing everything that they can all the time, I think is huge because it's never stopped. The community kind of gave us enough support that it was no question that we were going to be able to give it all back. So the Maddie Potts Fieldhouse is how we're doing that. Fieldhouse is, is going to do a lot for her memory as well as the Charaho community. It's not just another building. You know, I've been, I've been to a lot of groundbreakings. And this is different because it's a celebration, not of just a building. It's a, an actual dedication to, to Maddie and everything she was about. It's in the stories. It's in the giving something back to the school that you know, she felt so strongly about. And it's funny, I, I say all these things, but I've, I've never, I never met her. Uh, but I feel like I have. So many memories are on this field, I think, for everyone. And I think having something positive here with her name on it very permanently, I just think is one of the best ways we can honor her. She would be proud of that. She would be angry with me that I'm building a building and putting her name on it. <laughs> My favorite part is the atrium. It's going to be this beautiful atrium full of pictures of Maddie, so that way generations to come will know who is Maddie Potts, what does Maddie mentality stand for, and why is this building here, and I think, I think that's beautiful. The support is, I can't even explain it. I get excited about looking at the new drawings, I get excited about the groundbreaking, and all the people in the community that want to help have reached out to us that have said, how can we help you? Whatever the cost is, we're doing it. We're doing it for cost. I need to be part of this project. There are never going to be words that I can find or use to thank every single person in this community that has sent us messages, donated, purchased Maddie merchandise, you know, have a sticker on their car, helps share her message. That's what this community has done for us. I mean, they helped us survive. So to be able to give that back in Maddie's name is enormous. I can't even describe it.
Stephanie, thanks so much for coming on. Greatly appreciate it. And I love talking to you. And I'm er always excited to hear what you have to say. And thanks so much for doing what you're doing for the community and obviously the great work you're doing uh, in your daughter's memory. So thanks so much for coming on the program again. Yeah, thanks for having me, Rob. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy uh, to think it's been about three and a half years since, um, yeah. you know, Maddie died in the soccer field of her high school. Um, team captain, uh, playing a great, great, great game, recording it for college videos she'd hoped to play in college. And she lined up to take a free kick. And at that point, um, ruptured a brain aneurysm that none of us knew she had. And I uh, was briefly resuscitated on the field and they were able to get her pulse back, um, but ultimately died a few hours later at Hasbro Children's Hospital. Right. Um, As we go into the interview, so let's talk about it. It's been an incredible few weeks uh, that you've had uh, with raising this incredible amount of money uh, for Chariot High School to build that new field, uh, field house, rather, which is called Maddie Potts Field House. So talk about that. How much did you raise uh, and how hard was it to raise that incredible amount of money? Uh, in less than three years, and one of them being a pandemic, which, right. you know, lost a significant amount of fundraising. Um because of Maddie's story and the effect she had on all of her friends when she passed and our community, in total, uh, we've been able to raise over eight hundred thousand wow, dollars. And uh, you know, we're a very small tri-town community, um, pretty rural. I think we're known for like our, you know, you being from Rhode Island, we're known for our turf farms and agriculture and everything. Um, so the fact that, that we've been able to raise as much money as we have is, uh, it's restored my faith in humanity that um, people will literally give anything they have in order to help someone else within, you know, our community. What were the emotions coming out of you and the family, you know, being there, raising this money and the dedication ceremony that happened for Maddie Potts Fieldhouse? Uh, you know, it's incredibly bittersweet. Um, yeah. We picked the day for the groundbreaking ceremony being April 11th, this past Sunday, because that would have been Maddie's 21st birthday. So it's a, it's a very, it's a big mix of emotions of, you know, we should be celebrating our daughter's 21st birthday and instead we're breaking ground on a memorial field house. Um, yeah. I think under our own circumstances, as I've said to, you know, all the media that was present, um, it was overwhelming that so many media and um, newspapers and producers wanted to be there. I think under our circumstances of loss, um, giving Maddie this gift um, of a 3,000 square foot building in her name to one, help support our community. Um, I think it's just the best way for Maddie to be able to continue to give back to all of her teams and the community and her friends and her peers um, and our sports boosters in all the ways she would and did when she was alive. Uh, this building will be there long after I'm gone and mm. we hope to use that as a representation of a set of characteristics that we now call Maddie mentality to really show young athletes, particularly young females, that you can really be anything you want to be. And you can do it in a way like Maddie did with, you know, having respect for yourself, um, learning from your mistakes, reaching out to others, realizing this isn't just about you. This is about everyone around you and learning how to make them better. When, when you were on before, you, we talked about the pandemic and how it affected uh, the activities that the Maddie Potts Foundation does to raise money. A lot of those activities went virtual as far as the fitness classes and the workout classes. Right. With that said, what are we thinking about for next year? I know it's a little bit away, uh, but uh, I, I guess it's this year, I, I guess we should say. 
I, I'm getting so mixed up with the years and days anyway. So what are we talking about for the next annual Maddie Potts Foundation uh, when you do do all these workout classes and fundraisers for her in her memory, I should say? Uh, is it going to be regular? Will it be outside? Is there any new ideas that you've come up with, Stephanie, to raise more money and obviously, you know, keep building on Maddie's memory? Uh, yeah, we're ready to go. Uh, you know, last year, really, we canceled everything. And like you said, we did have to do a lot virtual. And despite that, our community of support is, they, they don't give up. You know, they just, they they all have learned so much with Maddie mentality that, you know, they want to just continue to support us. So um, our golf tournament in June already sold out, sold out first day it open for registration. We have over 204 golfers. We have Fieldhouse sponsors, foundation sponsors. Um, so that's June 19th. And our uh, annual fitness challenge, which like you said, last year was virtual. Um, it will be, as of now, we're going public. We're working out outside again. It, all of Maddie's characteristics will you know, be displayed and there'll be um, an activity associated with each of those and including um, you know, an obstacle course for students with disabilities. And that's our signature event, not because it raises the most money, honestly, um, because it is all about Maddie Potts and who she stood for and how she gave back. So um, that will definitely be, you know, in person, outside. Um, we're trying to squeeze in a, a lacrosse tournament. Our lacrosse seasons have gotten a little crazy time-wise up here because of the pandemic. But, you know, all of our fundraising, when you say $800,000, that seems like insane. But honestly, it started with um, our boosters raising money after Maddie passed. And mm. uh, Nike actually came and gave us a $50,000 grant. And I think that really made us realize we can do this. Um, all of our fundraising otherwise is small events and... Mm. That's how incredible this community is, is they buy every Maddie shirt created. They want to wear POTS 11. And her story's gone way beyond Rhode Island, um, either through athletics or through others that have maybe suffered a similar fate and the loss of their kids or mm -hmm. loss of a family member with brain aneurysm. So... Um, we just have to find the positive in that and continue to celebrate how Maddie lived her life, not the event that defined her death. So let's talk about this $800,000, as we've talked about throughout the whole interview, is a huge amount of money. Uh, now with that in the field house built, I should say with the field house built, what are you going to do with that, with the money that's raised now? I mean, you did talk about the animal shelters and giving to the homeless as far as food banks, stuff like that. Is that where this, the new money will be going to, or what are you thinking? Well, um, the field house, it was just the groundbreaking. So mm -hmm. you, of that 800000 we've given um, about 200000 in uh, scholarships, operating costs, pre-build expenses, so we have about 600,000 left um, to build the field house itself, which I'm sure will, it will take every last penny of that. Mm. Um, and it's about a 16 week process. So we're hoping to have it um, up running and a dedication ceremony by September for our Cheriho athletes to be able to use in the fall. Um, we have a lot of things we're gonna do after that. We're going to continue to give back to the community in every way that we can, you know, expand our scholarships. Um, ironically, one thing I want to do personally with our foundation is help offset funeral costs to other families that lose a child or family member as acutely as we did because um, it's devastating enough to lose your child, let alone two days after their funeral, get a bill in the mail that you have to contemplate using their um, college savings to pay for. 
And I just felt like that's something I want to be able to help other parents that maybe don't have the resources and the community that we did. Um, and ultimately, I'm going to collaborate with some businesses and hopefully some local school districts. And again, you being from Rhode Island, you know, South County is a, a fairly tight group. I'm hoping to collaborate and do a, a multi-million dollar venture of building the Maddie Potts uh, Memorial indoor track and practice facility. Um, we don't have anything like that in South County. I immediately wasn't able to find enough land at our own high school to try and take that on. And um, there were other needs that we needed met before we took on something of that magnitude. But that will be what our future is likely gonna gear us towards. For everybody, again, look up the Maddie Potts Foundation. Uh, tr if you can contribute, uh, contribute. Uh, definitely check it out. Learn about Maddie's story. Learn about the Maddie mentality. Learn about the events. If you're in Rhode Island or you're near Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Connecticut, or maybe you're going to Rhode Island, you can check it out. Uh, but it's just, it's a, a valuable cause. And obviously we've heard Stephanie's story before about Maddie, and we're definitely going to put that in the description box. Definitely check it out. But Stephanie is really incredible for doing what she's doing, not only for her daughter, but just to keep everything going as far as Charo High School. You've done so much for that community in general. So I even, even though I'm not in the community, I appreciate what you did. And, you know, we appreciate you keeping Maddie's memory alive because I think it's important because, again, more people should be like that, helping kids with disabilities, helping animals, just being a genuinely good person. You know, right. we don't have a lot of good people around uh, right. as much anymore. So, uh, Stephanie, thanks so much for your time. Stephanie Potts, again, on Fire Breathing Rob. Thanks again. All right. Thank you, Rob.